Gone home. Gone home. You've been that nagging thought in the back of my mind for quite some time. I've wanted to address your problems, your issues, your claims at gamehood. But I just needed the right angle to do it in my way, in my fashion. Well, that angle has been found, and today, it's your day in court. If you can make yourself more than just a man, if you devote yourself to an idea, and if they can't stop you, then you become something else entirely. To give a bit of background, when the game came out and made the rounds, I had it gifted to me by chance. Friend of a friend, you could say. At the time that I played it, I grew to despise it and the praise it had got. I had a script for a video ready to go on the matter, but I scrapped it because I was far too angry. And angry hyperbole is something that's not in my particular domain. I believe anger is a very, very precious resource. Besides that, the story does not deserve anger. That's reserved for more special targets. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me get the following out of the way first. Despite its claims to the contrary by both its developers and its ardent supporters, I do not consider Gone Home a game any more than I consider the works of Telltale or the Chinese Room to be games. Interactive fiction, perhaps, but to claim that they would be a game would be like saying Tony and Tina's wedding is a lark. The primary reason for why is a severe lack of obstacle. In Ralph Koster's book, A Theory of Fun, it's stated that the fun in games is derived from the satisfaction gain when figuring out how to overcome its obstacles and being rewarded for doing so. At best, Gone Home's sense of obstacle is finding the next key equivalent or another object, or a simple combination puzzle to get to the aforementioned key. Secondly, the reward given for overcoming what little obstacle present is either exploration, i.e. starting the process at square one, but with more space, or journal entries, which is a can of worms in and of itself that I'll get to. However, that is only addressing the work insofar as mechanics. It could be argued that it's a narrative experience, so the story should be analyzed first as a story. I've seen that mode of thinking with a lot of so-called art games. Now, putting aside the flaws of story over gameplay, which I've already talked about, I can't accept that claim either for two reasons. The first is easily addressed. It's not a very good or even very unique story. For the purposes of this take, I'm not going to analyze the story scene for scene because A, that's been done better by others, and B, the fact that its flaws are so written into its DNA makes analyzing the story in that manner redundant. Beat for beat, Gone Home's narrative is the teenage runaway story, with the protagonist from the good family running off with someone the parents don't approve of. The only difference is that it's another girl in this situation. Even that is inconsequential in the grand scheme of the narrative, which could take place in any teen drama or rom-com I've seen over the course of my lifetime. Running through the narrative feels like a checklist of every single cliché and trope in that type of story. If the story presented in this was released as a movie, it'd be dismissed as another of the aforementioned rom-coms. A movie more as product than a artistic statement, to be consumed and then forgotten on dates. However, the method is just as important as the material in question, which leads to my second issue. Put simply, journal entries are the worst kind of framing device for this story. While I personally believe that journal entries in the sense of video game narrative are one of the most abused motifs currently going, I believe they can work if done correctly. However, there are two reasons why Gone Home's use of audio journals fails. First, they are far too one-sided. The sort of narration does not work as the primary source, for lack of a better word. You need an in-story audience to react to the narration. This doesn't always have to be another person in the story, mind you. It could just as easily be an event in the story to help contextualize the events you're seeing. A good example of the latter is in many horror titles ranging from Resident Evil to System Shock 2. Here, however, the closest you have is the gamer themselves, and that is a passive experience at best. It's like watching someone else's vacation and being told how good of a time they're having. It creates a disconnect that blocks any sort of immersion the game's going for. This brings me to my second issue, the breaking of diegesis. In gaming parlance, diegesis refers to how the game's mechanics and presentation serve to immerse the gamer into the experience presented. Its relevance here is the fact that hearing these audio logs in a game centered around exploring causes the gamer to stop in order to pay attention to what's being heard, effectively taking you out of the experience of exploring an abandoned house to listen to the story it wants you to listen to. I think that's why the side stories you piece together from the various items in the house are considered more interesting, since by putting the pieces together you can see the tapestry at work. It's something that you are an active participant in. Furthermore, there's no real payoff to the story once you finish, nothing that really makes the journey worth it. 
I think that's why so many accuse the game of deception in one form or another, because the destination did not make an acceptable reward for the journey. I recall Don Bluth saying that animation shouldn't be used to do what can already be done in live action. That sort of thing, in my not-so-humble opinion, applies all the more so with interactive media versus non-interactive. The nature of the former allows for options and motifs in narrative and experience that the latter doesn't offer. Gone Home, despite its protestations, did not need to be a game. It could just as easily have been a short film and not much would have been lost. I'd even argue that it would have had a stronger presentation, seeing a protagonist reacting to what's on display. I firmly believe that the best way to learn its craft is to not only study its tenets, but also its pitfalls. To that end, I actually would be half willing to recommend Gone Home as a case study in things you shouldn't do when designing interactive art. As a piece of interactive art itself, however, it's far too fundamentally flawed. There are tiny kernels of idea present, but the work as a whole is a consequence when nobody was there to offer a design counter-argument. 